Hello and welcome to something a little bit different. So, um, it's something I've always wanted to do is a break from the unemployed to unstoppable, um, where you uh, start unemployed and you work your way up different clubs, make transfers in the ultimate goal of winning the, the Champions League or your League Nation trophy. Um, one of the challenges, which is often been described as the hardest challenge on Football Manager, is the Youth Academy or Youth Intake Challenge. Um, and it's something I've always wanted to do. So, I mean, the rules are the safer are quite brutal really you have to holiday forward um a whole year until some newly promoted clubs get brought into the game so for us in england it will be the vanarama national league south or north you then take charge of one of them clubs that's um a brand new promoted so weren't in the game at the start and um you will not be able to sign any players loan any players or trial any players you will purely operate on what comes through the youth intake so there's a massive element of luck in there um, there's a massive element of having to develop the youth system, uh, youth training facilities and recruiting the right staff, etc. So in terms of difficulty level, it's right up there. It's really um, going to be quite a challenging feat. And the, the end goal is the same. It's to try and win the Premier League with the club that you uh, take charge of, which is going to take many years. It's going to be very difficult. Um, and it might be something that might be too much for me because I've I've made some initial trials and had a look at uh, what, what kind of clubs you can take over. Um, and one of the things I've already noticed you've got to be careful of is which club to pick at the start. So it's not as straightforward as picking the one that has the coolest name or anything. So um, I'll holiday this forward uh, the full full year, I think, to about the 24th of June. Then we'll come back and we'll pick a club that's probably best suited for giving us the opportunity to uh, make a real good go of it. In terms of ending the challenge, if we get sacked, that is it over. So this... <laughs> This might only be one or two episodes before um, it all falls apart, but hopefully there's enough people interested um, to see how it goes, to see how the youth intakes um, are, are produced each year and how far we can realistically take it before um, we hit a brick wall or we can't make any progress. So all that being said, um, let me get through, um, set it up, we'll look at what clubs are available and then we'll pick one um, and then we'll decide how often we're going to come back and visit the progress and see how the club's getting on so hopefully you're all as excited as me um, i'm really looking forward to it i can't wait to see which clubs are available um, so stay tuned uh, welcome back so we have gone a year into the future we're on the 24th of june 2024 the promotions and relegations have all been sorted out um, we've, if anyone doesn't know how you do it, basically you create a dummy manager and you go on holiday for a year. Um, we've now retired that dummy manager and we'll create a manager in charge of one of the promoted clubs. The way to find out who them promoted clubs are, if, if again for those who don't know, is you go to the Vanarama League North or South and you can look at the season preview and that should tell you who all the promoted clubs are. So from the Vanarama National League South we've got Salisbury, Gosport or Dulwich Hamlet. To look at and in the north we've got Bamber Bridge, Marine, Nuneaton, Michelover and Matlock to look at so it's going to be hard to pick them there's a few criteria we need to look at really um, I think one of them is is what the status of the club is so in terms of club facilities um, again what we're looking at is training facilities and youth facilities so basic youth facilities is good youth level three what we'll do is we'll compare them across the clubs and make a bit of a short list. Um, so Bamber Bridge is youth facilities basic and a three. Um, so if we look at them as a short list with some of the other clubs that are in there, Marine, and again, we just need to make sure we get some basic, basic youth facilities and a four. I'm guessing a four is higher than a three, so we'll say Marine's winning at the minute. Um, certainly from the, the south side, Nuneaton, Facility wise, poor, so we'll try and stay away from them a little bit. Michelover, um, poor, so we'll. It looks like Marines are winning as it stands at the minute, but there are a few other criteria to consider before we make the plunge and take that job. But as we look at Matt Lockdown, uh, basic with a four, which I think was um, similar. So I think we've got Matt Lock or Marine in the south. In terms of the north then we've got that's the national league that's a jump too high uh, in terms of the south sorry we've got salisbury 
facility wise poor poor so we'll um we'll avoid salisbury no offense to those who live in salisbury it's nothing personal <laughs> i just don't want to make it too difficult uh, any kind of headway we can make in um facilities would be good we'll rule out gosport uh delic hamlet is the last one to check in here uh basic and a four so Dulwich is, is one, so we've got Dulwich, Marine and Matlock. I then have a look at what kind of squad size we've got. So again, that to me um, would be ideal if you could sign players. If you were taking over a club where you could make some signings, that would be ideal for me because it's a small squad. Um, when you can't make any signings, you can only rely on the youth system. You would have to make do with that um, until your ne next youth intake comes in which doesn't look particularly big and you've got four goalkeepers in there so again Dulwich Hamlet might be ruled out because of that very reason um, if we then go back to the teams that were in the north we can look at Marine for example look at the squad size again pretty small they don't even have a goalkeeper they have anything in the youth team no so you'd be taking over a team that doesn't have a goalkeeper um, potentially for eight, nine months because um, I think March is the youth intake. So Marine's not looking great either. Um, and who was, a, was it? Matlock was the other one. Um, player, senior squad. Much bigger squad to deal with. Can probably make us do a little bit longer. Um, just make sure. Are they filtering out some non-real players in there yeah I think they're they're not real so again can I filter out the players who aren't real how do I Ooh, hide players not the club they're not on there maybe they are real then I don't know it looks slightly different to me now I don't know why they're they're palmed off in grey. Does anyone know? Again, let me know in the chat section if you if you know why they're like that. I, so I think, bizarrely, um, we're probably going to have to make do with the first one we looked at because I, I'm, I'm a little bit unsure of Matlock in terms of the squad size because I think them players that are highlighted aren't real. They've just been brought in to maximise the squad to get through certain games which is why they don't have any wager expiry dates um, so I think we'll rule out Matlock which means I think we're down to a cast of one because I mean Marine seemed like a good prospect but I don't think we can get that far without a goalkeeper which really only leaves us with um, the other team in the south which was was it Delich? I think it was Delich basic and a four so again they've got too many goalkeepers not enough strikers I mean they've, it's gonna be hard to pick a formation it's gonna be difficult to make some something workable from that the only other option then is to take one of the other clubs that don't have as good a um, facilities so we'll rule back in like a Salisbury for example and see what they've got so yeah, I think it's all looking pretty similar across the board. I think there's a lot of clubs that don't have enough players here. Um, it's a decision between whether we go for squad size or facilities. And I, I think what we're going to have to do is go for the Dulwich job. So I think Dulwich Hamlet are the winners. I think that's the team we'll take. Um, best facilities, best makeup of a squad perhaps to get us <laughs> to get us part way through the season in terms of the um the preview i mean 15th 50 to 1 with what they've got already i'd like to think that'll stop us getting relegated perhaps and give us a chance to get the first thing taken so dulwich hamlet is the choice um i'll take over the club we'll look at evaluating the squad and see uh see what we can do with it really so if we get in there and add ourselves as a manager let's get us in there Vanarama South Dulwich Hamlet uh, no coaching badges Sunday League footballer boff we're in so Dulwich Hamlet I, Williams as manager is a little bit of a pink blue 
uh, scheme going on here, which isn't the end of the world. Um, but what we'll do is we'll go and have a look through the squads and we'll see what we have available and how long we'll have to wait for a youth intake and uh, get our teeth into this squad and, and see who our first teamers are going to be. So let me evaluate them. I'll get back. I'll give you an update who we've got, who's good, who's bad and um, what we'll be hoping for in the youth intake. And then, uh, like I said before, I don't think this is a game we're going to update you on every 10 games like we do in Unemployed to Unstoppable. I think it's very much going to just be updating you at the start of the season of what we've got, um, looking at the youth intakes as they come in and then doing an end of season review. So a very quick two to three episodes per season, perhaps nothing more than that. And again, it's just going to be played at a pace in between Unemployed to Unstoppable, um, unless it gains in popularity, in, in which case we'll try and get it a little bit more frequent. Um, but yeah, keen, keen. I've never played it in this way before. Um, I'm up for the challenge and hopefully you'll all be along for uh, what could be a very interesting ride. So stay tuned and I'll give you an update on who we've got, who our players um, that might be staying are um, and see what we've got to work with for the first six to seven months. Uh, welcome back. So I've had a chance to evaluate the squad. It's very small. Um, one of the things to notice is there's a number of players who aren't on full-time contracts. So the first thing... I've gone to do is offer contracts to um, nearly all of these because uh, what I would say is we've got four goalkeepers two of the goalkeepers who are out of contract have bids in so uh, what I'm going to probably do is just let them go uh, keep the two goalkeepers which will give us room for when um, new players come in in the uh, youth intake which I'm already desperate for them to come in even though that's a, a huge number of months away um, but squad wise yeah we've got Jack Ruddy who looks like a a goalkeeper who's, who's all right for this level so he'll probably be our uh, starting goalkeeper then we've got William Lakin as a kind of younger prospect 20 years old to be his deputy so not too bad in the goalkeeping stakes in terms of the the back four then I mean we've got Dwight Pascal he's our kind of best right back I mean aggression and bravery is great tackling work rate so he's he's actually not that bad a player with the stats he's got for this level However, he has got a bid in for him, so we don't know if we'll get to keep him. If he does go, um, we'll have a few little problems with that, um, but I'm sure we will adapt and overcome as we can. Uh, left back then, we got Jay Binom Williams. Um, again, he, he looks all right um, for this level. I think that's what you've got to kind of quantify. Is what you will notice is we don't have any staff in at the minute, so we can't really evaluate where they are in terms of current ability or potential ability, but. Just as a quick snapshot of their their stats, uh, I think they're all pretty similar for this level. We've got back two. We've got Marvel Ekpititeta, um, so Captain Marvelous, uh, we'll call him. Centre half again. He'll probably be a starting centre half. Nigerian, 28 years old. Again, we hopefully get a couple of years out of him while we get some players through. Um, alongside him, we've got Michael Chambers. Um, again, nothing nothing special to talk about there in terms of like bright green stats and things. We've not really seen too many. Um, but again, he'll be solid for this level. Um, again, Andre Blackman is a, a backup left back. He'll be in there defensively. I mean, defensive midfielder we're quite flush for. We got Ad Shukumbi. Um, again, I'd like to play him in the deeper role, but he probably sits better in the middle of the park. But again, for one of three, we got Ridley. Well, Riley Scott, not Ridley Scott. Again, another defensive midfielder who can play in a deep role. And, I mean, he looks like a nice, happy little chappy, doesn't he? So we'll maybe at 22 years old build a team around him and try and keep him as long as we can while we flesh out some new blood. Uh, and then Alfie Allen, again, he kind of makes up them three. Again, only 21 years old. So um, for the youth intake challenge, we've already got a few young players in here. Um, other players, I mean, Anthony Jeffrey, I think he's touted as being one of our best players. Certainly in terms of pace and acceleration, he's, he's rapid. He can play on either wing. So we'll be looking to keep a hold of him and use him out, out there. Elliot Romain, he can play either wing and up top. Again, I think we're going to have to use him on the wing initially because we don't really have anyone on that left-hand side. Um, Ayuk Tar, he'll probably be our starting forward just because he's got the dribbling finishing first touch. Um, best three spread of all the other players at the squad. Richard Pingling, not to be confused with the, the Peng Willings that um, Doctor Strange used to talk about. Um, and Danny Mills, not the Danny Mills, uh, a different Danny Mills, who we can um, play up top as a rotation. So really small squad. Um, other thing to really look at is the staff side, of which we've got none, which is why we can't get any um, star ratings for the players we've got. 
or potential. So it's really difficult to assess them from a coaching point of view on which ones have the highest potential. So job offers gone in, or I'll say job adverts gone out for all of them as it, with the recruitment team as well and the medical staff. Not too fussed about the, um, the scouting side of thing really, other than getting our own players evaluated. As we all know the rules, you can't sign any players on this save. So don't have to worry about the transfer window type stuff. Formation wise, that's what we've plumped for based on the recommendations, uh, which they didn't pop up because there's no one there. So we might well reevaluate that once we get some staff in. But certainly, well, three defensive midfielders in there um, fills in that kind of middle fleshy part. We've only really got a couple wingers. One of our best players is a winger, so that kind of belies to us playing wings. Um, we have enough back four to fill a back four, probably not a back five. And then we've only got one or two strikers. So this fits. Um, it's down as a gig and press. I don't think that'll stay like that very long because I, I don't think we'll be able to play it. And um, this will very much evolve as and when the staff come in. Um, so I'll click through. I'll try and fill out them stuff. I'll give you a quick update before the season gets underway. See if we filled them. Get a bit of feel for what kind of our squads are in terms of a star rate. And there's a snapshot. And then we'll get into the business aid and, and play our way through until the uh, first youth intake. So um, I'll get them in. I'll do you a quick update before we end the episode and then uh, the next thing we'll be looking forward to is, is hopefully our first youth intake if we make it that far because as we all know if you get sacked that's the end of the challenge and that would be the end of the save you can't take another job it is a case of um, one shot at this or it's all over so fingers crossed we can make it that far our season expectation is mid-table um, it's going to be a very hard hard task with the players we've got but we'll, we'll give it a best shot because again it's a challenge I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to give it a go, and um, why not? Why not do it here? Why not do it on YouTube, where everyone else can see us um, either succeed or fail? So um, stick around, and I will be back with one final update before we end the episode. Uh, welcome back to um, the Youth Intake Challenge. Uh, you'll be pleased to know we've got all the staff in. Um, we're full complement now. Um, so we took um, one general, one coach, goalkeeper, one fitness coach. Um, we've got an assistant manager in, which is fantastic because it um, means I can farm lots of training type stuff off to him. Um, we've got the recruitment team in, which is best in the league. And um, we've just got the physios in, which is best in the league in terms of physio. Um, unfortunately, squad-wise, we, we took a bit of a battering, really. Um, not everyone signed a new contract of who we wanted to keep, um, which meant that some of them left. And once they've left, you can't sign them back because you can't sign free transfers or trialists in this challenge. Um, so what that's meant is in the transfer history as you can see uh, arguably in fact it's not even on this list so Dwight Pascal went um, who was our promising right back which is really unfortunate um, but more so than that if I can find him um, was our main right winger and I don't know why he's not going on there but our main right winger left um, he wouldn't sign a new contract wouldn't even entertain it so we were down to 12 real players in the squad. Fortunately, um, during a friendly, uh, what I've found is we've got some little youth players in there. So we've got Lolo Atienza, a Spanish 16-year-old centre-half. Um, now that we've got the scouts down, we can see he's got a three-and-a-half star potential on him. So before the youth intake even comes in, um, we've got a young prospect in there who's um, got quite a bit of potential to play long-term for this club. So we've promoted him immediately to the first team. Uh, we've also managed to get another couple, so Edward Aloako, again, quite good in terms of potential ability, he can play on that right hand wing, which is really fortunate because that's where the player left, so a 16 year old Ghanaian, um, and, and again, this has reinvigorated the excitement about the challenge because you start to see some of the players that you get coming through, and then we've got Jake Garder, who's maybe not got quite the same amount of potential, however, um, in a squad this small, he will get some game time, so... Uh, in terms of the squad planner, then it's not looking uh, it's not looking pretty, but it's not looking horrific. We've got Jack Reddy and Lakin. Um, okay, we've got two left backs that we can play upon them. Benham Williams is more of a centre half. Right back, maybe we're struggling a little bit um, because our left back is our best right back type scenario. All right midfield, right wing. I think Amoaku is going to be a, a bit of a godsend for us out there, as, and he'll have have to develop quickly. Glider's got cover on the other side. And then up front, Tark unfortunately isn't getting a work permit, so his contract will expire and he will move on because he won't be able to play for us. 
But yeah, that's it in terms of the updates. Um, so small, small squad. The first season is going to be very difficult in terms of ability and potential. Um, I think we look all right. But will we be able to finish mid table? Is the question and keep our job. In terms of the season, please preview. We've actually gone up to seventh despite losing most of our players. So God knows what's happened to everybody else, but that is quite promising for us. So that should be the end of the episode, really. And all, all I really need is you to wish me a little bit of luck that we can get through these first nine months and get to the youth intake, where the save will really start to heat up and get a bit more interesting. And we'll start to bring in players um, and see what we can do in terms of accomplishing what is the most difficult challenge of football manager. So once again, thanks for watching. Yeah, hopefully you'll stick around for the full journey on what's a slightly different save. Certainly something that's uncharted and unknown for me. And uh, yeah, until next time, uh, enjoy yourselves and look forward to a, a fantastic youth intake. See you soon.